What's going on everyone? Tyler here again and I am here with the Battle Spirit tutorial. I'm going to go briefly over the object. Uh, you've seen it on the last trailer. In case you haven't seen the trailer uh, to this tutorial, here it is right now so you know what we're dealing with. Okay, but since that time, I've been playing around with the objects some more, and I have textured it. It's gone through a couple of revisions, and here they are. I gave it a little smiley face, uh, added a little gimbal on there so it had some type of optical vision. I added some vents for the thrust. I guess uh, if it's a kind of a jet engine, it would need some type of inlet for the thrust. And added, of course, some missiles. And uh, yeah, he's flying. And let's get a little bit more into the 3D part of how he's constructed and how the uh, compositing works on the 3D side. I know everyone doesn't have Max, but I'll give you a couple of pointers in any application that will help it out. What I recommend for your reflections on your object, instead of just adding the background image and letting it do the reflections or, you know, adding some type of um, HDRI image, um, not really image, but lighting system, it won't actually light it correctly and also it won't it kind of helps your lighting but it, it doesn't quite give you what you want because you do not have that much control as far as compositing as placing your shadow in your environment and so on so what i did i uh, ended up compositing this with the image and not video because i wanted to um, add the zoom and pan and tilt in post so what i did i just um took a still image with the camera pointed in the direction that I wanted the uh, battle spirit to be in and I then took that and I cropped it down to the proportion that I wanted which is 1920-1080 which is basically standard HD and I cropped that out and used that to line him up in my 3D application which is just the background image which actually the object is not having any type of lighting or anything done from that single background image. The background image in 3D is just used to get your object in the correct position and orientation so that he looks like he's actually in the scene. And down here I have a special map that Max makes and just about every single 3D application has a similar type of mapping system for your shadows and which is a, a mat slash shadow map and what that does is it renders out only the shadows in your scene and that is used to composite later on in a separate program like After Effects and as far as the background this is what I use for the reflections on the object and what it is I just stood basically where I thought I'm going to put the object in 3D and I created this image it's not perfect but it's good enough for reflections and you can see um, how I just took a 360 degrees, seven images, and then used Photoshop to put them together. And that's what's making the reflections for the object. Now let's get back to the one where you saw my little preview. And let's go to After Effects. And you can see this one right here is um, not nearly as many textures or as detailed, but it's fine. It was a test, and I liked the way the test came out, so I'm going to share with you guys how I put this together. I'm not going to go step by step because I was doing that earlier and it turned out to be over an hour and I don't want to keep anyone over an hour. I'm just going to give you the uh, gist of it and see if this will help you guys out. So first what I did was, if you can see, I took the images, like my parking lot image is 3,500 times 2,333 pixels. I wanted it bigger than HD so I can then go and post these uh, digital zooms, pans, and tilts in After Effects to create my camera movement. So basically I, li I got it all lined up and I'll, I'll go into this one particular one real quick and you can see how Max actually puts, let me go zoom in here so you guys can see it, and you see how Max, when it renders out the shadows, it actually renders the, the background into the shadow, which is very useful when you're compositing. If you want to put it somewhere else, it's not very useful, but if you're doing it yourself and you know exactly where you want your object to be, and you're doing the 3D, you're doing the compositing, which a lot of you guys will be doing, because uh, if you don't have any budget, that's, you have to do it all yourself. So I will quickly go over this. So I'm going to make a new composition, which is already there. I'm going to click OK. I'm going to take 
my background, which is the parking lot, drop it into a layer. And you can see I have very little space here on the edges because I want this to be the mat. And you want to put everything in your mat and then later on in your 1080 comp to create the camera movement. So I'm going to take the battle sphere and I'm going to put him in there to my comp. Oops, drop him in right there. And you can see right now, I'm going 100% where this is actually needs to be right here. So I'm going to move just the spear and put him, line him up to pretty close where it needs to be. It's not perfect, but unless you know, you're not going to know. So I'm going to take it to fit. And see, this is basically how I set the shot up. He's going to sit right here and nothing's going on. He's just sitting in a static, non-moving frame. So let's go to my main out and I'll quickly go through this. Okay, and this is the parking lot layer. If I click on this, you'll see a duplicate of the parking lot layer and it's still not moving around and it's in the full size, which is 3,000 times 1,688 which is how I did this particular one at its mat size. And if I click on this layer top one, basically this is just the heat effect of the rockets when they start to ignite and give the battle sphere lift. And that's basically what I was trying to do right here. And it's a fast blur to blur it some and then a wave warp to actually give it that motion. So I can go back to the main out comp. So that's that particular composition right there. This one is a duplicate to give us that depth of field look in post. This is duplicate of this one. This foot copy and paste and then it's named it parking lot DOF for depth of field. And what happens is you see right here, everything's in focus. And if I, when the camera pushes in, which is a digital zoom, I made sure that the battle sphere was blurred and then as the battle sphere came into focus, the background blurred out. But the Zelda effect, I had to duplicate it, give it a mask, which is right here. If I hide this, you can see that I'm only affecting this particular part of the mask. And I'm leaving this part unaffected so that right here is in focus, the parking lot area. So it gives it that more true depth of field look. And it, it's just, it's nothing's any type of mathematical equation is just what I thought would look best at the time. And that's what a lot of this is. It's just playing with it, getting it how you like. And, you know, some people hate on it. Who cares? You're learning, you're having fun. That's all that matters. And then I added a reflection because the parking lot was wet, as you can see. It's got like a reflection of this. All this is wet coming in. So I just added a reflection of the object, which is right there. And it's basically just the battle sphere particular section duplicated and flipped. Now I'll get to the battle sphere now composition, which is the blur, which comes in only when the thrust comes in because if there's no heat there, you won't get that blur. And then when the thrust comes in and produces a lot of heat, you get the wave effect and a blur effect. So I did a fast blur and a wave warp and animated that to uh, work with the composition. And then I put the spear in. I only wanted to affect this bottom section. And just added a little more effect to thrust particles, this one. I just basically uh, tweaked the mask so that, because um, we're working in an HD to a bigger than HD, so the very, very edges of the screen, I could see clipping. So I basically just made a mask for that so you couldn't see the clipping on the edge of the particles. And that basically gave me all the control I needed over this guy to get the effect that I want. And I animated the mask just a little bit because he moved, you know, out of it. And um, it didn't have the uh, effect I wanted on his thrusters. So I just kind of moved the mask a little bit. I didn't take time to track it because he didn't move that much. So I just kind of moved it a little bit with a couple of keyframes and it worked fine. So back to the main out. And let's get to actually how I added the shake in the camera. So the shake in the camera is this, a little bit of shake. And the zoom is actually on another layer. I'll show you that in a second. But just the shake, see, let me um, do no parent. You see now, 
It's just a shake, which is basically this. I will show you this real quick because it's very easy to show. Let me delete all those keyframes. I'm going to add just the position keyframe in the front and the very end. Give it a tiny bit of movement and it'll add a keyframe. Oh, sure did. Oh, you know what? I'm on the scale. Wrong one, right here. Add just a little tiny bit of it and give you a keyframe. And you can see now it's just doing a slight little zoom, which is nothing. It's fine. It'll work. It'll work great for what we're doing. So, to add that camera jiggle, like when you have a handheld device and you know get a little jiggle with it, this adds an extra bit of realism that helps sell the effect. I'm gonna. Go up here to the window and let me click off wiggler so it won't be in there. So if you if you have never clicked on it before, it'll be like this. You go all the way up to window, click on wiggler, and you see it appears right down over here. And these numbers you have to mess with and get correctly to what you need and what your wants are for your shot, but these are the magic numbers from me. So you want to select just the first and last keyframe and hit apply. Now you see what this is why you have to add a parent like to a null object to add your pan and tilt to finish off the effect so this is adds a little bit of camera jiggle and all these particular guys right here the battle spirit the reflection and the parking lot that the field it's all parented to the parking lot one so that controls all these and then your zoom which is basically a null object if I bring them all back see the null logic and that is just controlling where your camera pan tilts and zooms and that's pretty much the effect see and I added one more layer let's get it where it's all in focus except for the background you can see that kind of helps uh, also when you blur the background it kind of helps bring your subject into what you want to see so by adding the blur your eyes are distracted with the background and what's going on back there it's more looking at what's in focus the way you naturally do with your own eyes and that is the action you want to see which is the battle sphere hovering around and being cool and then lastly add an adjustment layer add a little color correction and that pretty much sold the effect rendered it out took it into premiere did a couple little more tweaks in it there and came out with what I'm going to show you right now, which is what you've seen earlier, but I'll show it to you again so you can see the finished product. All right, well, that's pretty much it, guys. Uh, but if you have any questions, comments, uh, just send them my way, and I'll do my best to answer all your questions and comments. And subscribe. Ah!